Welcome back. Today we're going to be disassembling the 700 r valve body. This is out of a 1992 unit, so it's a 87 and up, which means it's designed to work with an auxiliary valve body. So you can readily identify this particular uh, vintage valve body by just simply looking over here where the uh, torque converter clutch mechanical valve train was installed in the earlier uh, versions of this valve body. Uh, it was eliminated starting in late 87, so you won't have the little port here, and of course this will be just cast over. Um, the only other thing I'll mention is the um, uh, this valve body is only designed to take one switch. That's the fourth clutch pressure switch. So um, earlier valve bodies had more switches. So I'll do a, a video uh, separately on all the different uh, changes and iterations that uh, GM made to these valve bodies through the years. But um, suffice to say that uh, this was the second to last uh, version, the late 87 through 92, and then they had one more change in 93 for those valve bodies. And they went into the um, F body platforms, Camaro, Trans Am, you know, Firebird, etc., and um, the Corvettes. All right, so I'll do a quick run through of the valve lineups. So here's your main throttle valve. So you got your throttle sleeve and plunger spring, and then the throttle valve itself is back here. And then you have your 3-4 relay and 4-3 sequencing valve. In this location here, um, whatever you do, do not stick your 3-4 relay valve in backwards. If you do, you will not upshift the fourth gear. Uh, this is your fourth clutch pressure switch. Uh, then you have your TV limit valve, accumulator valve, line bias valve, and 3-2 control valve. And then, of course, your manual valve. On the back side, you have your main uh, forward pattern shift valves. So you have your one, two um, throttle valve sleeve, spring and valve, and then your uh, one, two shift valve, your two, three throttle valve sleeve, spring and valve, and then your two, three shift valve, and then your three, four throttle valve and sleeve, and your three, four shift valve. And then you here, you have your MTV upshift, and then you have MTV downshift. Okay, I'm gonna start on this side, take everything out, we'll line them all up. And then we'll do the same to the other side. And then uh, when I'm all done, I'll you know kind of reposition the camera so that you can see all the valve trains laid out. So all these switches take a sensor socket. This is um, made by OEM. A standard 1 and 1 16th socket will also work, and that uh, applies to all pressure switches like this. Okay, so for the throttle valve, they should have had them on the bench to begin with. You want to have a, a good set of diagonal cutters. So sometimes you can pry up on them and it'll come out like this. But if it doesn't, if it's real stubborn, just take it, you know, whatever purchase you can get on it, and then just wrap it up like that. Okay, there's your throttle sleeve, your plunger, and your spring. Looks like a shift kit may have been installed. So one of the more popular shift kits for these transmissions is the uh, Transgo Junior shift kit, and I install it on all my 700s, uh, irrespective of application, primarily um, for the improved throttle valve that comes in that kit. A real bad problem with the 700R4 is a sticking TV valve, and that shows up as either inconsistent line pressures, especially at... Um, you know, at stall, but it'll, it can show up anywhere. Um, additionally, high line pressure, if you have just like, you know, way too much line pressure at idle, you know, you got your gauge and your, um, you know, screwed into the uh, pressure port and the passenger, excuse me, driver's side of transmission, you're trying to set up your TV cable and your, your pressure gauge is just, uh, you know, maxed out. That's usually indicative of a uh, stuck TV valve. So sometimes this particular roll pin can be really stubborn, 
as you can see here, so just take like angle cutters and pry up and it'll eventually come out. And then your TV valve should just come out. Okay, so here's the updated valve. It comes with two stop springs, or stop stick springs rather. So you have a little spring that goes here into the, um, uh, into the snout, and then you have an additional spring that goes on the outside of the snout. So again, very effective. Um, hang on, let me see if I can find a factory one. So here's an example of a factory TV valve. You'll notice here in the back, it's you know just one big land, whereas the Transgo valve has lands here that allow crud and debris and whatnot to pass through. And then of course, it has lands up here as well. So again, more um, areas where it can clear debris and grit and other contaminants that would otherwise cause the factory valve to seize up because as you can see there's you know there's no uh, lands or anything like that in that location so significant design improvement in my opinion and um, you know if you're building a 700 r it just makes sense to uh, buy the kit for that valve we'll get the manual valve out of the way okay your next valve train is going to be your 3-4 relay and 4-3 sequencing valve. And with many of these valves, you want to have a finger or a thumb, you know, over the uh, opening so that the plug or the valve or spring or whatever doesn't fly across the room. And there's a couple that are, um, you know, under a real high spring tension. This one in particular, the M... Um, uh, <clears throat> TV limit valve. That looks like that doesn't want to come out. So here's your um, 4 3 relay valve. Notice how the big lands are facing inboard. That's how you want to go back with it. If you don't, then there's a good possibility that you will not have, well actually not a good possibility, it's, it's guaranteed that you will not have a 3-4 upshift. And you'll be messing with the cable and you know trying to romp on it and you know maybe checking out the servo and um, you know seeing if uh, the one or more ceiling rings got pinched or cut but no they're fine. Uh, if that happens to you and you kind of go through those progressions and you, didn't, you don't find anything and you're working on either a 700R4 or a 4L60E, check that um, you know, 3-4 relay valve. That could be the problem. Alright, so just put a thumb here. And that'll stop the little plug for the uh, TV limit valve. Come on. What I really need is a small magnet, but don't have one. Okay, there's your valve and spring, or I should say your plug and spring, the valve itself. Right here. What I've noticed over the years, 
is the springs are a different color. You know, and I'm not, I'm just talking generally speaking, you know, throttle valve spring, the, um, um, you know, four, three, uh, sequencing valve spring, TV limit spring. I mean, I've seen all different colors. I wouldn't read too much into that. I'm not exactly sure what the significance is. Maybe different, um, applications, you know, got slightly different you know, mechanical calibration in these, some of these valve trains. So this is the accumulator valve. It's a little end plug. And let's see if we can get that valve out. should be a spring in there. And the Transgo kit will come with different color springs and have you match your spring based on, um, in the case of the accumulator valve, I believe it's uh, whatever servo you're using for your second gear. So there's the 553, the 554, the 093, and then aftermarket billet style servos. The uh, 553, uh, it was installed in most of the V8s. The 554, I believe, was like V6s. Um, the uh, 093 is going to be your Corvette servos. And, um, you know, they were installed obviously in Corvettes. And in the 4L60E, they installed them in, you know, F bodies and, um, you know, later models like the Escalades and the, Den the Denali's and things like that. GTOs, they got them too. Okay, so that's your accumulator valve. Next up is the line bias valve. And a lot of guys will tell you to block this valve off completely. In other words, replace the spring with a rod. I know that some of the shift kits have you do that. They'll have like a rod that'll go in here and completely block the movement of that valve. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know that I'd recommend that for a purely street driven application. I think it's fine for you know, street strip or uh, obviously full race. In fact, I do it myself for anything serious street strip or full race type applications. But for just normal daily driving, uh, grocery getting and whatnot, if you do block it off, you will have, you know, you will have uh, very harsh part throttle shifts. And, you know, it's, it's not ideal. For any street driven application, you want to set up your mechanical shift calibration, whether it be on the combination of uh, valve body springs and, and different uh, valves, governor, uh, you know, uh, governor setup, a different uh, shift point timing, etc. Um, based on um, whatever application your, you know, your vehicle is going to be used primarily in. And for most street driven applications, the idea is that you want to have mild mannered part throttle shifts, but really crisp, uh, really uh, tight, for lack of a better term, full throttle shifts. You really don't want to bang shift. Even racing, you really don't want to bang shift at all. Um, you want that shift to be short and crisp. And, you know, the higher the RPM, the shorter and crisper it should be. Because otherwise, it's not going to be fun to drive and you do, you do kind of run the risk of breaking parts inside the transmission. Okay, here's your 3-2 control valve. And it is also shy, it does not want to come out. So we're gonna force it out. Well, not literally, I mean, it's, it was just my clumsiness. It wasn't seized or stuck in there or anything like that. Okay, that's one side of the valve body. Now we'll do the second side.
And then we'll start with uh, the one, two control valve train and then two, three, three, four, and then your MTV up and down. bit so you can see the valve trains. So just again a bit of trivia, get into more details in another video, but the 1-2 valve train underwent significant changes starting in 87. They redesigned the 1-2 throttle valve sleeve and spring to be much larger and eliminated the 1-2 um, low range uh, upshift and downshift valves. Uh, and they had their own sleeve and there was like another roll pin that went in to secure that sleeve and I mean just take my word for it if you haven't worked on one of those it's a pain to get back in sometimes uh, not all the time but you know a lot of times you'll have to go at it for a few minutes before you finally get it in there properly and then there's the 1-2 shift valve again in the uh, 82 to 86 valve bodies uh, they had a, a different looking shift valve in there to accommodate the um, differences in, in some of the other valving. All right, that's the one, two. I'll deal with the two, three. It's interesting to note is so far, anyway, I haven't seen any other shift kit components in this thing apart from that updated Transgo throttle valve. Okay, so here's your 2-3 shift valve, or excuse me, your 2-3 throttle valve spring and sleeve. And then the 2-3 shift valve will follow very shortly, as soon as I can persuade it to come on out. Overall, this transmission was pretty clean inside. No major, you know, issues, no significant hard part damage. Pump was a little scored up, but that's normal. An 8700R4 4L60E pump is almost always going to be scored or you know or messed up. I'll put a little shop towel under there, prevent anything from falling through. G34 throttle valve. Sleeve and spring. And the three four shift valve. Sometimes it's not easy to get the camera angles where they need to be. These valves normally don't fight you. I mean, it's, it's pretty rare that they're seized. Usually what it is is just adhesion, you know, they got trans fluid on them and, you know, they, they, they just don't want to come out. You know, they're kind of stuck. It's like suction, keeping them in the bore. This one's going to make me pull out the 
kinds of stuff to get it get it out of there. So I'll use a paper clip sometimes. Just bend it any which way to you know get into these tight spots. Kind of sneak its way in. There we go. There it is. Did not want to come out. Okay, this is your MTV upshift valve. It's going to be under some spring tension. And there's a spring, it's a factory spring. Okay, so this spring is sometimes left out in performance builds. I mean, I do it too. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, the MTV upshift valve is basically um, designed to force an upshift at whatever RPM, certain RPM. So um, a lot of times if you're you know, doing something performance, that timing of that shift may not be optimal based on what you're trying to do. So if you leave that spring out, then it won't shift. You know, you know, you won't have that forced uh, upshift that um, that you would have with the spring in. So it's just a just a consideration for for performance applications in a factory type, you know, daily driver that's not going to see any kind of RPM or not used. Um, in any sort of high performance application, it's not necessary to, to omit it. In a typical heavy duty kind of towing and hauling application, it's um, you're usually not a, you know, applicable per se. I mean, you're never gonna see the RPMs in a work truck that you would in say like a you know, Camaro IROC or, or VET or something. Okay. All right, valve body is completely empty. It's ready for the hot tank. So let me reposition the camera. I'll get the two valve trains together and uh, you know, I'll give you a kind of a bird's eye view of them so that you have that for your reference. Uh, the only differences between this valve train and the um, 82 to early 87 valve bodies is gonna be in your one, two, um, control valve train here. You're going to have a different looking um, one, two throttle valve and sleeve. You're going to have two other valves and a second sleeve and you know, as the Air Force mentioned, one, two low range upshift and downshift valves. And then the one, two shift valve is going to be different. The, um, yeah, this portion here, the stem, it's not going to be nearly as pronounced and it's going to be a physically um, shorter valve, but otherwise it'll look similar. And then uh, in this area right here, you'll have the um, if uh, the valve body came with it, you'll have a mechanical torque converter clutch lockup valve train. Otherwise, you'll have aluminum um, slugs. You know, there's these two different size aluminum slugs. You know, one's a little bit smaller and narrower. The other one's wider, like you know, roughly the size of these bores. And that's what you'll have um, if you're working with an earlier valve body. But other than that, all the other valve trains are going to be exactly the same. So there's not much variability in the 700s as there is, say, to the TH400, for example. You had some, you know, different configurations, and that was application-specific, uh, you know, make and, and application-specific. All right, so there's all the lineups. So if you want, go ahead and take a picture. Let me uh, fix the TV valve real quick, and I'll get out of the way. So here are all the valve lineups. Uh, feel free to pause the screen or take a picture if you'd like. Um, you can find this information in the um, ATSG manual or factory service manual for any year 700 or four. 
Uh, as I mentioned, the only differences between early and late are going to be in this one two valve train and the presence or absence of a mechanical torque converter clutch lockup uh, valve train. All right, so we'll get all this cleaned up, put it back together, um, and uh, you know we'll move on down the road with it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, leave them below. Any comments, any feedback. Otherwise, um, you know, again, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it, and we will catch you on the next one.